All right, we are back, and let me talk to you here, Tiger High on his soapbox, because man, this was a weird weekend, weird weekend, weird weekend wrestling. Does that sound weird? Maybe it sounds kind of weird. I could be extremely wrong, but it's like the the double W's is so weird. Anyway. Let's talk about Raw. So Raw did jump back. It was obvious what happened there because it was a highlight show for the last show. It went right back to where it needed to be. Uh, 1.6 million views. And last week it was 1.075. And it was a uh, point. It was a uh, 0.41 demo compared to a 0.27 demo last week. So obviously that's the reason for this. And the show, I would say, overall was good. Uh, the Bloodline destroying stuff is fine, but once again, we got to get something moving here with the Bloodline stuff because it's like every single week, every single week. But I would say it was good energy to start. Uh, the Bliss stuff, snapping and stuff is fine. I like the brutality that she showcased because, trust me, she needed it. But why the Bray Wyatt? We don't want that Alexa Bliss anymore for the umpteenth millionth time. We want the goddess of WWE back. That's the badass Alexa Bliss that we want. But no, they're going to give us ooh, spooky, demon, whatever, because apparently they can't because they want to sell dolls. I mean, that would too, but still. Solo Soko and Elias in the Music City Street Fight was actually very entertaining. I kind of like those gimmicky... Street, street fights, fights that they, they do in certain places, places. Brutal, brutal, fun, didn't, didn't really go, go too much there. there. There's not too much more to say about it. Uh, Loomis and Gable was fine, but the ending was absolutely awful. I don't know what they're doing with them whatsoever. Uh, Montez Ford being concerned about his wife after the attack was a nice little right. um, slither in there for the six-man tag, but it came back, and um, it was fine. I thought it was a good match overall. Obviously, uh, Bloodline won because they always win. Damage control, Becky Lynch and Mia Yim, this thing was an absolute total mess. They did a handicap match, then it went into a tag team match, but then Becky Lynch was doing better as a handicap match, so Mia Yim is useless. What, what are we doing, doing with these women? Like, it's so, un very, it's very unfortunate right. that they're just sort of spinning their wheels in the mud. And then Theory and Seth Rollins was absolutely great. It's a good match. I hope that they're done with it, but I'm excited to see where it goes for both guys' careers at the end of the day. So overall, I gave the whole show a full thumbs up just because a lot of it I like more than I hate it. Let's go into NXT. It was a 588,000, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, 653,000 views compared to the 588 last week. They bounced back with a 0.16 demo instead of the 0.12 that they did last week. So totally fine. Um, I thought the show itself was, eh, I'll give Orange Cassidy thumbs up to be nice. Uh, the intrigue here with Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams, Axiom, and Apollo Crews is something that I like, but, you know, a nice upper mid-card main eventer stuff that does not have the title on the line is totally fine. It doesn't have to happen. Everybody still stays strong. Uh, the Angelo family being baby faces, I am not a huge fan of that. I don't know why they think that that's a good idea. Just have Dijakovic and Wesley. That's the match. Let's stick with that. It's for the title. The NXT Women's Division brawl was absolutely great because they had to do that factory hard reset on the entire division after the firing of Mandy Rose. Yep. And I'm glad that they waited until the beginning of 2023 to facilitate that kind of hard reset. New eyes, new sort of year. Right. Let's see where it goes. And with the 20 women, it puts everybody on the same plane. Right. So that's what I like. The Alba Fire and the um, uh, Isla Dawn match was good. I hope this rivalry is done because at this point you're starting to spin the wheels in the mud. I'm not sure why they did the Oro and the Javier Burnell rivalry. It's just like a whatever sandwich. I just hate it when people waste my time. Uh, schisms is fine, but why did they have to lose? Why did Kofi Kingston have to beat the leader of the group? Because they need a title. I've been saying it forever. Because, once again, they're spinning their wheels in the mud. It's good that they have Ava Rain, um, Ava, Ava Rain? Yeah, Ava Rain there, but at the same time, they need something more. They need to feel like a credible threat. Right. And right now, they just don't. They won their six-man tag last week. Great. Let's see where we go from here. Kofi Kingston did not need to win. And then the feud with uh, Breaker and Waller is just totally fucking stagnant, and that's very unfortunate. Um, Grayson Waller obviously just dances around Braun Breaker, Mike Wise. He is so 
damn good, and he's still so young. It's amazing to see what this talent is uh, this year. I actually remember Dynamite. Yay! Uh, Dynamite actually went down from last week. So oh, wow. apparently, So apparently the new little flashy colors trying to make himself look like WWE Thunderdome Wish version <laughs> did not work. We had 864,000 views average down from 876,000. You're getting really close to being NXT levels of bad here. And you are a billion com or a million dollar company because your dad invested $100 million into the fucking project. Good job there, Tony. You know how to do this. It was a .26 demo down from a .28 demo. And this is Dynamite, the first one with the new look. I like it. I think it looks neat, even though it's WWE-esque. I thought it was supposed to be gritty, but apparently not. No. It doesn't matter. I still liked it. I think it looks neat. Uh, Jericho Appreciation Society obviously have to be the Jericho Appreciation Society and continue to bury good young talent. Hooray! Because Chris Jericho is Hulk Hogan. Uh, Action Andretti and Ricky Starks were both absolutely destroyed by all of them and nobody cared. So we have... Oh God! Do I have to? I do like the um, I do like the Hangman Page and John Moxley thing, but come on, let's do something. I wrote this before the um, before Hangman was cleared, so that's kind of why it says that. The acclaimed beat Lethal, but of course Jeff Jarrett has to be Jeff Jarrett, yeah. not lose. Um, they lost at Battle of the Belts. Thank God, I was a little bit worried about that. The match itself was just kind of there. I'm sorry. I know that they're popular. But the acclaimed title run has just been kind of meh. Yeah. Just in general, Brian Danielson and Tony Nese should have been something that was a lot more than what it was because it was actually kind of boring and one-sided entirely. Hmm. The segment with MJF was good, and I'm really starting to like what they're doing there, but we've already seen three or four different rivalries where the person facing MJF had to go through trials to face MJF. Right. Let's do something different with that. At the very least, he needs a group. They had a group, but they disbanded it because... Tony Khan doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, Swerve Strickland and AR Fox was very good. I want to see more of that. Give me more AR Fox. He is incredibly talented, and Swerve Strickland, despite my criticisms of the other two goons on the outside, I think he needed this. He's looking more like a main eventer, and there's nothing wrong with Swerve Strickland as a main eventer. Nope. The Guns promo was actually very good. Writing off FTR in the way that they did was nice, and the Guns needed it. So, so they're putting, putting them on a pedestal. pedestal. I'm really they digging that. that. Hopefully they they'll take on the acclaimed at some point in time in the future. But you, you got to get them some wins. wins. You have to do it slowly with the Gun Brothers mm -hmm. leading up to the acclaimed. Right. But, but we'll see what happens there. Because obviously daddy ass is there. Exactly. Uh, the women's tag with Kira Hogan, Sky Blue, Jade Cargill, and Red Velvet was an absolute disaster. <laughs> they had the potential, once again, to have a big rivalry with Kira Hogan. But no. And even when... Red Velvet literally left. Jade Cargill high and dry. Jade Cargill won. So what was the fucking point? Right. Is Red Velvet going to be the woman that destroys Jade Cargill? I don't see it. And I think obviously Kira Hogan is better, but it is what it is. There's no direction or focus in it whatsoever. And finally, Samoa Joe and Darby Allen was good. It was a great moment. Darby Allen winning in Seattle. The crowd went absolutely insane, and it was a fine match. Overall, it was. Orange Cassidy, thumbs, thumbs up, up to be nice. This is where I give it a full thumbs up. I could not find numbers for Impact Wrestling for this show, but, you know, they're just kind of meddling in the middle. We had Masha Slamovich and Taylor Wilde's stuff was good. It was a good showcase, but they need to stop adding people into this number one contenders match. They went from a singles match to a triple threat match, and then literally, I think, like a couple of days ago, they It was now a four-way. Now it's a four-way for no apparent reason. Anthony Green's debut went okay, actually, against Black Tarus, who was the number one contender for the X Division champion, and it was fine. I like his moves. His look is neat. Let's see where they go with Anthony Green. Jonathan Gresham is so awesome and a great way to showcase him against the jobber, but man, people just made fun of him for his height. We get it. He's short, but he's also built like a mini fridge, and he will absolutely bend you into a pretzel and yeah. make you his bitch. Um, also, I know that um, uh, Jonathan Gresham and uh, uh, Jordan Grace, Jordan Grace uh, were in a mixed tag team match over this weekend. Yes, they were. So, First time ever. Yeah, that was really cool. And obviously, they are married. Uh, Moose and Joe Hendry, always so funny. I believe in Joe Hendry. Uh, dancing Moose was great. Moose really sold it well. And I think this is actually elevating the digital media champion. I thought it was sort of a downgrade for Moose to go after this belt, but 
He's, he's really starting to play into it well. well. Joe Hendry is great. Yep. It's, it's all sorts of fun. People, people laughed at it. I laughed at it. You, you can't go wrong, wrong with that in wrestling. wrestling. The Matt Cardona and Chris Saban match was good, but why did they do this to promote the tag titles when there are four teams? Maybe have a fatal four way. Probably would have made more sense, but I still like the match overall. And finally, where we see here, Bully Ray and Scott Demore stuff was absolutely excellent. Bully Ray continuing to be one of the best heels in wrestling. Scott Demore really did this quite well, and he took some moves in, and I was fairly impressed. So good on him. Definitely a full thumbs up on there. Smackdown! Hooray! Uh, Roman Reigns yelling at Sami Zayn was uncomfortable. It was like watching your mo your friend's mom yell at your friend and you're just kind of sitting there. That's kind of how I felt, but it was a really good segment and it really drew in people. Um, I saw the chart. I think there were like 900,000 people watching this segment alone. So that's really good for Reigns and Sami promoting that. And obviously we knew that it was going to be Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens at the Royal Rumble. So happy about that. Overall. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, it was 2.2 uh, 2 million, million people that watched it concurrently, 2.6, so it's down, but once again, you're over 2 million, and you had John Cena last week. So, obviously, there was that. It was a .5 demo uh, in comparison to a .64 demo from last week, but once again, John Cena. Yeah, the John Cena effect. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I love how Michael said that he, he said uh, that the ratings were higher because of Raquel Rodriguez. And, and Ronda Rousey. Yeah. It's, it's like, like, guys, guys uh, Michael, Michael Cole, you're, you're great, great, but at the same time, time let's just be real. Let's be realistic. We all know why people were tuning in last week. Exactly. Uh, I'm just really hoping that the Bloodline stuff does not... I mean, this this whole friction here is fine, and I broke the raw notes before I watched SmackDown. So, mm -hmm. this was definitely good. We need more of it. And since we're getting more towards WrestleMania, mm -hmm. Sami Zayn's going to get betrayed. We're going to have the tag team title match at WrestleMania. That's how they're going to do it. And it's obvious that's where they're going. That's why Kevin Owens is still with them. And they just have to continue to for Roman Reigns to defend the title mm -hmm. to get those ratings because Roman Reigns is a draw in WWE. Kofi Kingston and Santos Escobar was a simply structured good match. Nothing wrong with that. It was there. Uh, Karrion Cross and Scarlett taking on Emma and Mad Cat Moss was a totally wasted opportunity to make Scarlett look more like a big deal. Right. This was her debut match on television. And yet they just did it in a random mix tag. But once again, does anybody care? No. Right. Of course not. No. You had the opportunity to make people care, but you didn't. Also, Emma called Mad Cat Moss Riddick. Please change his fucking name back to Riddick Moss. Thank you very much. Charlotte is on such a different level as a babyface. She is incredibly popular, and she's going to try to be this fighting champion. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet because we've only had one match with Sonya Deville, and it was fine, and that was for the title. Ricochet and Top Dalla was over, a flip, uh, over the flop botch. That's literally why, but it's oh. really weird that Ricochet was portrayed as the babyface, and yet he was making fun of Top Dalla. Does that sound kind of heel? That sounds kind of heel to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Hit Row turned heel. I think it was. I think they needed it. Yeah. They need some edge to them instead yeah. of like this baby face, whatever. And Braun Strowman is still with Ricochet because yep. we need Braun Strowman on television for an unknown reason. And finally, tag team title match was good. Don't get me wrong. But why are we having the tag team champions on these all the time? It's like, holy shit, we've had, like, three title matches for the Undisputed Tag Team Champions over the course of maybe two or three weeks. So that's very annoying, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's downplaying the integrity of those championships. And obviously, we got to talk about Rampage, which actually was surprisingly very good overall. Uh, Top Flight and Brian Danielson, John Moxley tag team match was a very good match. Ah, do you have numbers for this? Uh, no, I couldn't find ah, any. Okay. Unfortunately, it was it was probably going to be floating around that 400,000, maybe a little bit more because mm -hmm. of the Darby Allen pops, yeah. but you just never know right. with uh, Rampage. Right. And I think they released these on Monday for some reason, oh. so I'll probably report on it later. But uh, Top Flight really putting in a good spot and hit them facing another dual thing of mm -hmm. uh, Blackpool Combat Club was very impressive. And these aren't small people. Like, Blackpool Combat Club are the draws within mm -hmm. AEW for the most part. So putting Top Flight with them is really showing how much they're committed to yeah. Top Flight. And I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. 
Let's see what they do with it. Maybe there's a rivalry developing there out of respect, but I just don't know right now. All I know is that I like it. Uh, why does Jamie Hayter feel like a second-class citizen to Britt Baker? It's because he goes to Tony Khan, and you guys know it. Come on. But overall, it's just, it's so unfortunate because Jamie Hayter gets a much bigger reaction mm -hmm. than Britt Baker, but Britt Baker is the one who gets all the pyro, right. everything. Yep. She got the pin, everything. But the Renegade Twins actually did get some offense in on both of them, which was totally fine. But at the same time, your world champion is in a no-nothing tag team match with the person who blows Tony Khan like he blows Coke and against two women who are good, but at the same time, they're the Renegade Twins. Right. They don't have like that big star power like you would with Soraya, now Tony Storm. Uh, that whole thing is an absolute mess, but the women's division within AEW is, once again, an absolute mess with a bunch of fucking losers. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Pero Perigrosos, Preston Vance, is incredibly impressive. I love the new theme song. The presentation is good. He's a great heel, and I really like his very powerful moveset. Continue to book him like this, and you're going to have a star with Preston. Mm -hmm. And I think they definitely need some, given what they're doing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Darby Allen and Mike Bennett was surprisingly good. I was not expecting it. They explained how he got to this title match, mm -hmm. where Mike Bennett challenged Darby Allen after Dynamite. And they showed it, so it was like, okay, we have context for the reason of this. Right. And um, it was good. All good things because they were still in Seattle. Darby Allen from Seattle got a big pop yep. at every turn. And the match itself was structured quite nicely. But that was the week in wrestling. Overall, it was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, some highlights, some lowlights. But I think overall, I enjoyed all of the shows that we do cover. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be moving on. So up next, we're going to be talking about Wrestle Kingdom. Because trust me. There's a lot of talk about with Wrestle Kingdom. Oh, yeah.